Hey everybody, I uh, just wanted to do a really quick video to talk about uh, some of the challenges I've had with audio in Ecamm Live. Now, I love Ecamm Live uh, from the ability to bring in Skype participants, uh, especially during this time when everybody's stuck at home. It, it's a great tool. I've really struggled with some of the audio, but I think it's because of the way I have things set up. What I'm doing is I have a Sony FS5 that I am bringing um, video and audio in uh, from the camera to over an SDI cable using a Blackmagic uh, Ultra Studio Mini recorder. And that's a Thunderbolt connection into my Mac. Um, Ecamm Live sees it as a source, um, but it does something really weird with it. So the first live stream that I did, uh, when I listened to it just on, on the Mac speakers, it sounded fine. Uh, but when I did the live stream, I got a few comments of people saying, you know, the audio, your audio sounds a little bit weird. Now, the Skype audio sounded fantastic. People were like, oh, Skype's great. You sound echoey. So I was like, okay, well, what's up with that? So I went back and I listened to it and I sounded okay. But when I listened to it on different devices, I noticed that my audio was being panned far, far right, like right to the right hand side of the right channel. Um, in fact, when I listened to it on my iPhone, the Skype audio came out the bottom of the iPhone, sounded amazing, um, but my audio was coming out through the little speaker at the top. So if I listened to it like this, it sounded okay, but if, you know, listening to it any other way, it sounded, it sounded bizarre. Um, so I played it back on my car and sure enough in my car, it was like far right in the back speaker and the far right hand side. Sounded like I was in the back seat. Um, and then on my computer too, it was coming out of the, the far right speaker. So like I said, the level and things sounded okay, but it just sounded weird because it was panned so far right. So I was, okay, well, how can I, how can I fix that? And I tried all kinds of different settings inside Ecamm Live. There's a setting that in the audio preferences that lets you uh, tell Ecamm if it's a stereo source, uh, use both channels. Uh, I checked that and then I also unchecked it and tried it both ways. It didn't seem to have any effect. So that didn't work. And I really, I couldn't, couldn't get Ecamm Live to do that. I, I was hoping it was like OBS where I could just say, you know, take all the sources and mix them as a mono output. Uh, but I didn't, I didn't find that setting anywhere on Ecamm Live. So I thought, okay, how can I do this? Uh, maybe I can do this through, through software. I have Loopback on my Mac, which I've used occasionally and quite like. Um, so I brought in the Blackmagic source in Loopback. I created a virtual device and I mapped the single mono channel to a stereo uh, virtual channels, uh, left and right channels. And I set Ecamm Live to use that as the input source. And you know, the first couple times I tried it, I did some test recordings with it. It worked great. And I thought, okay, problem solved. Yay, loopback, love loopback. And uh, then today I did a live stream and right away I got people saying, your audio sounds terrible. It's all crackly. And I was like, geez, what's going on here? And sure enough, I played back the live stream afterwards and oh, I was so upset. It was just, yeah, it sounded, it sounded crackly. It sounded like my mic was clipping, but it wasn't clipping. And so sure enough, I did some test recordings in Loopback and it sounded all robotic and it's almost like Loopback wasn't able to keep up with, uh, with the inputting the source and then mapping it to another output. And it's like there was some, some kind of delay or some kind of processing. Maybe it was just too much processing for my Mac. It's not an ancient Mac, but it's not the newest Mac either. So I listened to a bunch of other, um, uh, uh, live streams that I'd seen done on, uh, on Ecamm Live, and I noticed for the most part, people were always using a USB source. So they were either using a USB microphone connected directly into the to their to their Mac, or they were using uh, a, a microphone on the camera or through the camera, and then that camera was being converted uh, to basically a webcam feed uh, using an HDMI to USB source. So the computer would see it as a webcam and would see the audio as webcam audio. So I was kind of, okay, maybe Ecamm just doesn't deal with non-USB audio sources or non-built-in microphone uh, very well. Um, so what I did was I just unconnected my microphone from my camera and I ran it into my Zoom audio recorder. And then I used the um, 
USB feature on the Zoom audio recorder to connect to my computer. So it's actually a USB audio interface at this point. And just connected my mic up and then selected that as the input. And it sounded great. I mean, it sounded way better, but I did notice that there was quite a bit of delay between the input, uh, the audio input, which arrived in real time, and then the delay caused by the camera processing the video and sending it out over the SDI and, you know, whatever kind of delay there is with the Blackmagic Ultra Studio Mini bringing it in. So luckily the Zoom, my Zoom, that's an F8N, has an input delay, and I was able to just set the input delay to kind of match those things up. I just did a series of clap tests. And I went everywhere from nine milliseconds to 20. And I think I arrived around somewhere 16 or 17 milliseconds, which is what you're seeing here. So this is actually being recorded in Ecamm Live right now. I'm not using an external recorder. And uh, this is the audio that's coming into Ecamm Live from um, the USB audio interface through the Zoom. So it seems to have solved the problem. Um, it's unfortunate Ecamm is a little bit limited in how it handles audio. I'd like to see a little more control over that. So I think I've fixed it for now, um, but boy, this is a lot more setup. Um, microphone, Zoom recorder, camera, SDI, it's getting complicated. Um, I think maybe if I do more of these, I'll probably opt for something like um, the new Blackmagic sw switchers, which can take uh, take sources in and create them to USB. That might be just the simplest thing to do. and. Uh, probably less expensive in the long run. Um, although I noticed too that uh, this this issue of the delay of the video and the audio is not solved in those Blackmagic recorders. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. I don't know if there's other people that they're maybe struggling with Ecamm Live. Like I said, I quite love the software in terms of its flexibility. Uh, you can do a lot of the things in Ecamm that you can do. Um, you can do those in OBS as well. It's a little bit more cumbersome. Uh, I like the simplicity of it, and I like um, what I really, really like, and the reason why I'm using it the most right now is the ability to bring those titles, um, sorry, to bring those comments in from YouTube. So when someone posts a comment, it appears in a console, and you just click on it and bring it right into the live stream. If it didn't have that feature, I'd probably go back to using OBS. That's kind of the killer feature for me. And now that I think I've got audio worked out, fingers crossed. <laughs> Hopefully the next live stream will uh, will sound and look great. So anyway, like I said, hope that was helpful and uh, good luck.